The two passages of scripture that we read today, the options for this year's All Saints Feast, are passages of scripture among the options for a funeral. They bring us face to face with life's ending. It's interesting, I think, that reflecting on our mortality helps us live life well. This is the premise behind the class, living thoughtfully, dying well. And kudos to Ann Beatty for envisioning that here. This class has already met twice. The first week it had 21 people in attendance. The point is that when we reflect on our dying, we start to think about our living. The question may emerge, what kind of life will I be remembered for? In this Living Thoughtfully Dying Well class, this last week, several questions were offered up under the headline, what is important for a dying person? Here were four of those questions. In the days ahead, what worries you? What family issues are concerning you? How can we improve your quality of life? Do you need to offer or receive forgiveness? Somewhere in the midst of all of our liturgical tools is a prayer that asks that we don't die an unexpected death and unprepared. Indeed, these questions bring that to our forefront. We often think about our mortal end point as our first day in eternity. But in contrast, I want to invite you to think of your mortal endpoint as the last day you get to actively participate in being human. You see, we're always held in eternity, yet we as humans live in chronological time. It is God who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and we exist within those parameters. We humans live in chronological time, our particular segment of eternity. The fact that we can simply change the clocks and decide it's a different time, I always find amusing. An amusing example of this existence of chronological time. Like, I guess we just decided we're gonna change it now. And these people whose faces are around on our windowsills, they didn't change their clocks. They don't have one. Eternity in the living God is very much that, infinite, boundless, without the parameters of time and space. Consider these questions in addition to the ones I just read to you from the Living Thoughtfully Dying Well class. How would you like to spend your time now? What regrets trouble you? How can you still live with purpose? What frightens you about dying? What future losses disturb you? I'm struck by how these questions, although outlined as an important list for those that are dying, are questions which I find worthy of engagement. I could at least get a sentence started here in answer to any one of these. We reflect on the science of our being with the first law of thermodynamics. Energy can be neither created nor destroyed, but only changed from one form to another. This is God's parameter of being. This is God's rule, this law of thermodynamics. The fact that science has articulated it in a way that draws us into the mystery of God is our invitation, our blessing. Many of us can imagine and thus believe, since imagination helps us with the belief, many of us can ma imagine that these people in the photos around us live on. Even without their bodies, we know that we would recognize them in the infiniteness of God. We would recognize the essence of their being in eternity. It's harder, though, to apply this same awareness to the point before we arrived on this earth in this particular boundary of time and space. It's harder to consider that Sloan and Lucas existed in God before they came to be known to us as they are. When I consider trying to explain this or make sense of this mystery, it breaks my mind, I have to say. I don't think that our finite minds can handle how it is that God gives us life in the flesh. 
I mean, even though we know scientifically and we know from our you know, middle school biology class how it is that a baby comes about and that Morgan and Jack wanted Sloan and Lynn and Dennis wanted Lucas, they still didn't make them. You can't will a life into being. It is God who gives us life. It is God who makes our life with us, in our life, through our life, as our life. We all know that willing someone alive doesn't make them exist. Anyone who sat beside someone who's dying and wishes they would just stay alive knows their powerlessness. Anyone who has wanted a child and not been able to have one knows their powerlessness. The mystery of our existence beyond chronological time is one which will be revealed in God's time to each of us. Yet, we can orient ourselves to this truth. If we believe that we come from eternal love and return to eternal love, and this time of being in the flesh is held chronologically in that same eternal love, the question then becomes, how do we live in love in this world? Our baptismal covenant gives us some direction. We see um, the questions, will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? And we covenant, we promise that we will with God's help. The question, will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? We promise, yes, we will with God's help. And in this particular time, many of us, if not all of us, are saying, Lord, help. This is a hard time to do these things. And indeed, God does help. Because this is God's will that we live in love. As a church, we encourage one another in this. That's why we come together week in and week out. Of course, we are baptizing Sloan and Lucas and making, and their parents will say their baptismal covenant on their behalf, but you have said it many times, and we encourage one another in living into that. That's part of the, the joy of being a church together. The class, Living Thoughtfully and Dying Well, is another means of encouraging you in living in God's eternal love. The Braver Angels classes are another means of encouraging you in living in God's eternal love. Reading the book and engaging in the dialogue of caring assertiveness is another way to recognize what it means to live in God's eternal love. For we need skills for this effort as God works alongside of us. So the question becomes today, what have you begun this day which engages the eternal love which is God? In the end, if we have the privilege of dying slowly, here are a few more questions we might find important that someone could ask us according to this class. How can we honor your culture or faith? What wishes do you have for the last days? What do you think happens after death? What kind of after-death care do you want? How can people help you? When we come to the end of our life, we realize that we are the only ones who could live our life. No one does it for us. And I pray for each of us that when we look back over our years, we each see a life familiar to the love in which we live and move and have our being. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of Saints, we praise and glorify your holy name for all your servants who have finished their course in your faith and fear. For the Blessed Virgin Mary, for the holy patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and for all your other righteous servants, known to us and unknown. And we pray that, encouraged by their examples, aided by their prayers, and strengthened by their fellowship, we also may be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>